you can see this is the mucosal lining over here and you can see this is the lamina propria. The lamina propria, it is filled up by macrophages which are, uh, which have digested the cholesterol. So, these are called as lipid laden macrophages, okay. So, this is the mucosal lining as we can appreciate and this is the lamina propria, this area is the lamina propria which has been distended by the presence of this particular uh, uh, cholesterol laden macrophages. So, in the high power view, again we can see this is the mucosal lining over here okay and this is the lamina propria which is basically distended by the cholesterol laden macrophages so you can see the presence of cholesterol okay like small bubbles okay like small cytoplasmic vacuoles okay so these are all cholesterol okay so cholesterol laden macrophages can be appreciated over here in this particular diagram first we will discuss about the morphology of cholesterol stone so as you can see in this particular diagram as we can appreciate over here so, you can see that this is the gall bladder, okay. This is the gall bladder as we can appreciate and they are filled with, okay, cholesterol gall stones which are yellowish, okay, which are yellowish, okay. So, what we can appreciate, there are presence of cholesterol gall stones over here and secondly, we can see the thickness. So, the gall bladder wall has been thickened and fibrotic because of chronic inflammation of the gall bladder also called as chronic cholecystitis. So, basically over here, the cholesterol stones, they arise exclusively in the gall bladder. Cholesterol gall stone or cholesterol stones, they arise exclusively in the gall bladder. So, they might range from being 100% pure to 50% pure cholesterol gall stone. Okay. So, the pure stones, okay, they are pale yellow, round to ovoid, finely granular, hard external surface, which on transection, which on transectioning, if, if, if you cut the, uh, uh, the cholesterol stone, they will show glistening radiating crystalline palisade, okay. So, what is this glistening radiating crystalline palisade? Let me show you with the help of a diagram, okay. So, if you see over here, yes, on the cut section of the cholesterol gallstone as we can appreciate, you can see glistening radiating crystalline palisade, okay. So, is this very clear to everyone? On cut section, you will see the glistening radiating crystalline. Under the high power view, you can appreciate that these cells constitute the chronic inflammatory cells that is the plasma cells as you can appreciate and you can see the lymphocytes over here okay so lots of lymphoplasmacytic infiltration can be appreciated over here okay not only that you will see that this is the mucosa right so there will be a deep outpouching of the mucosa okay reaching into the gallbladder wall that is the muscular wall of the gallbladder so outpouching of the mucosa into the muscle layer or the wall constitutes what is known as a Rocky Tansky Aschoff sinus. Sinus means an empty space, okay, which is whose one end is closed and this end is open. So, this is a sinus and this sinus is called as the Rocky Tansky Aschoff sinus and you will be asked about this in your exam. This is a sure shot exam question, okay. okay. Myself, Dr. Gibran Amon presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important lecture. Today, we are going to read about the diseases associated with the gallbladder. And in today's uh, lecture, we are mainly going to discuss about the gallstones that is cholelithiasis and acute and chronic cholecystitis. In the next lecture, we are going to cover gallbladder carcinoma and congenital anomalies. Okay? So, in today's lecture, we are going to start with gallstones and acute and chronic cholecystitis. Okay? So, let us begin today's topic of discussion. Now, today's topic of discussion is a rather very simple topic and a short topic, but again, the concepts are very important and it is a frequently asked question in the exam. So, we will first start by discussion on cholelithiasis or gallstones. So, as we know that this is the gallbladder as we can appreciate over here, it has three main parts as you can see, it has a neck, okay, then it has a body and it has a fundus. So, there is a neck part, there is a body part and there is a fundus, okay. Now, if you see, the bile is basically draining from the right and the left hepatic duct and then it forms the common hepatic duct as we can appreciate and then it enters the gallbladder via the cystic duct, okay, via the cystic duct, okay, and when, uh, and it is also forming, uh, it is actually, uh, it is forming the storage site of, of bile and when required, the bile is again flowing out of the gallbladder, okay, and it is entering the common bile duct into the duodenum. So, the liver secretes, okay, approximately 1 liter of bile every day. In between the meals, the bile is stored in the gallbladder where it is concentrated. The adult gallbladder contains approximately 50 ml of bile. 
Remember that gallbladder is not essential for biliary function and therefore even after removal of the gallbladder there is no indigestion. Okay? More than 95% of the biliary tract disease it is, it is attributable to gallstones and it affects approximately 10 to 20% of the adult population. Now gallbladder or gallstones or cholelithiasis they are more common in women. So there is a dictum. Okay? So it is commonly affecting fat fertile female of 40. Now, the basic cause of cholelithiasis is increased amount of cholesterol or bilirubin, decreased amount of bile salts and gallbladder stasis, okay, stasis of the bile, okay. So, what are the risk factors for the development of gallstones? Very, very important. Now, there are two types of gallstones, okay. The more commonly found that is the cholesterol gallstone and the less common variety that is the pigment gallstone. Both the cholesterol and the pigment gallstones, they are differing in terms of the risk factors in terms of the pathogenesis as well as in terms of the morphology. So, we will discuss individually each one of them. So, let us begin today's topic of discussion. So, what are the risk factors for the cholesterol gallstones? So, remember that the cholesterol gallstones, okay, they are more common variety accounting for 80% of all the different types of gallstones. Now, they are commonly affecting the western population or the high income population, especially Europe and America. Now, another risk factor for cholesterol gallstone is advancing age. Okay? So, middle to old age individuals are more afflicted by gallstone disease. Now, females, okay, females are more susceptible because of the exposure to the female sex hormone that is estrogen. So, the female gender uh, individuals who are taking oral contraceptive pills as well as pregnancies. Okay? So, all these three things, they are increasing the chance of getting polylithiasis or gallstones. Why? because of excessive amount of estrogen exposure in such conditions. Okay? So, excess amount of estrogen, they stimulate the hepatic lipoprotein receptors which is going to stimulate the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase and that HMG-CoA reductase is in turn stimulating the cholesterol biosynthesis as well as the uptake and ultimately causing or contributing in the formation of cholesterol gallstone. The next risk factor is obesity and metabolic syndrome, uh, then rapid weight reduction gallbladder stasis, certain hereditary factors that is certain inborn errors of, met of bile metabolism. So, for example, there are certain genes which are encoding hepatocyte protein that usually transports the biliary lipids known as ABC transporters. Okay? So, basically any mutation or any problem in such genes encoding the ABC transporters, they are also associated with increased risk of gallbladder stone formation. And Different kinds of hyperlipidemia syndromes are also associated with cholesterol gallstone formation. So, these are the risk factors of cholesterol gallstones. What are the risk factors for pigment gallstones? So, as uh, you know, in contrast to the cholesterol gallstones, the pigment gallstones are basically uh, affecting the non western population, especially the Asians or the low income countries. They are developing under the setting of chronic low grade hemolytic anemia or in the setting of biliary infection which can either be bacterial or parasitic. Parasitic for example by Ascaris lumbricoids or Clonorchis sinensis sometimes also called as Opisthochoris sinensis. Then gastrointestinal disorders, certain gastrointestinal disorders also predispose to pigment gallstone formation like ileal disease that is the Crohn's disease, ileal resection or bypass surgery or cystic fibrosis with pancreatic insufficiency. Next, we are going to discuss the pathogenesis of cholesterol gallstones as well as pigment gallstones. So, first we will discuss the pathogenesis of cholesterol gallstones. So, the main uh, you know, pathogenesis of cholesterol gallstones is increased concentration of cholesterol which is exceeding the soluble, uh, solubilizing ca capacity of the bile. So, the basic pathogenesis in cholesterol gallstone formation is increased concentration of cholesterol exceeding the solubilizing capacity of the bile and this phenomenon is called as supersaturation of the bile. Cholesterol can no longer remain dispersed and therefore it nucleates into solid cholesterol monohydrate crystal. So, this is a very important MCQ. Okay, what is the MCQ? So, cholesterol gallstones are basically composed of cholesterol monohydrate crystals. Now, four conditions are contributing to the formation of this gallstone. The number one thing as I have already discussed, super saturation of the bile with cholesterol. Second thing is GB stasis characterized by hypomotility of the gallbladder. Then accelerated crystal nucleation 
lastly there is a hyper secretion of mucus in the gall bladder which traps the nucleated crystals leading to accumulation of increased amount of cholesterol and um, uh, appearance of macroscopic stones and appearance of macroscopic stones so this is all about the pathogenesis of cholesterol gallstones what about the pigment gallstones pigment gallstones they are basically a complex mixture of insoluble calcium salts of unconjugated bilirubin plus inorganic calcium salts okay now the basic pathogenesis over here is excessive amount of unconjugated variety of bilirubin okay that is predisposing to increase pigment gallstone so what are the conditions which are causing excessive unconjugated bilirubin conditions of chronic hemolytic anemia severe ileal dysfunction bacterial contamination of the biliary tree all these three conditions are predisposing to excessive amount of unconjugated bilirubin which is contributing to the towards the formation of pigment gallstones now how the bacterial contamination or parasitic uh, infection is causing so e coli and ascaris lumbricoides whereas uh, as well as clonorchis sinensis that is also called as a liver flu they infect the biliary tree and they increase the release of microbial beta glucuronidase this beta glucuronidase will hydrolyze the bilirubin glucuronide okay and therefore they will uh, uh, you know unconjugate the bilirubin okay leading to an excessive amount of unconjugated bilirubin which is contributing to the pigment stone formation now we are going to see the morphology now the morphology of cholesterol as well as pigment gallstones are different first we will discuss about the morphology of cholesterol stone so as you can see in this particular diagram as we can appreciate over here so you can see that this is the gall bladder okay this is the gall bladder as we can appreciate and they are filled with okay cholesterol gall stones which are yellowish okay which are yellowish okay so what we can appreciate there are presence of cholesterol gall stones over here and secondly we can see the thickness so the gall bladder wall has been thickened and fibrotic because of chronic inflammation of the gall bladder also called as chronic cholecystitis so basically over here the cholesterol stones they arise exclusively in the gall bladder cholesterol gall stone or cholesterol stones they arise exclusively in the gall bladder so they might range from being 100% pure to 50% pure cholesterol gall stone okay so the pure stones okay they are pale yellow round to ovoid finely granular hard external surface which on transection which on transectioning if if, if you cut the uh, uh, the cholesterol stone they will show glistening radiating crystalline palisade okay so what is this glistening radiating crystalline palisade let me show you with the help of a diagram okay so if you see over here yes on the cut section of the cholesterol gallstone as we can appreciate you can see glistening radiating crystalline palisade okay so is this very clear to everyone on cut section you will see the glistening radiating crystalline palisade as we can appreciate over here now you will see in case of cholesterol gall stones you will see usually multiple stones are present okay in common situations multiple stones will be present now the stones which are composed largely of cholesterol or where the percentage of cholesterol is high they are radiolucent on radiography whereas if they have impurities like calcium carbonate so sufficient calcium carbonate can be present in 10 to 20% of the cholesterol gall stones and that makes such gall stone radio opaque super saturated cholesterol remember super saturated cholesterol in the bile that forms the cholesterol stones may also diffuse into the mucosa and they can manifest as a condition called as cholesterolosis that is also called as a strawberry gall bladder why do we call it as a strawberry gall bladder we will discuss now so one condition that is called as cholesterolosis and it occurs under the setting of super saturated cholesterol in the bile now cholesterolosis is basically characterized by the accumulation of cholesterol laden macrophages within the mucosa of the gall bladder wall grossly you will see there will be yellowish speckling of the red tan mucosa of the gall bladder therefore the name is strawberry gall bladder because outside the strawberry also you can see yellow speckling similarly against the red tan mucosa you can see yellowish speckling okay in case of cholesterolosis and that is why the name strawberry gall bladder microscopically you will see presence of lipid laden macrophages within the lamina propria okay so you can see this is the mucosal lining over here and you can see this is the lamina propria 
the lamina propria it is filled up by macrophages which are uh, which have digested the cholesterol so these are called as lipid laden macrophages okay so this is the mucosal lining as we can appreciate and this is the lamina propria this area is the lamina propria which has been distended by the presence of this particular uh, uh, cholesterol laden macrophages so in the high power view again we can see this is the mucosal lining over here okay and this is the lamina propria which is basically distended by the cholesterol laden macrophages so you can see the presence of cholesterol okay like small bubbles okay like small cytoplasmic vacuoles okay so these are all cholesterol okay so cholesterol laden macrophages can be appreciated over here in this particular diagram now we are going to see the morphology of the pigment gallstones as we can appreciate the pigment gallstones they are black in color and again over here because of constant inflammation there is a thickened wall okay so the gall bladder wall has become very thick let me show you with a lighter pencil so this is the gall bladder wall which has become very thick because of continuous inflammation and these are the pigment stones as i have already said to you they are ranging from black to brown okay so pigment stones they can be black to brown in color okay so usually the the black colored uh, you know pigment stones are basically seen in sterile gall bladder bile whereas the brown colored one it is seen in infective large bile ducts okay so the black pigment stones they are basically polymers of calcium salts of unconjugated bilirubin along with the presence of calcium carbonate calcium phosphate okay then mucus glycoproteins and some amount of cholesterol monohydrate crystals might be present as well but majority is the calcium salts of unconjugated bilirubin okay similar compounds are also present in the brown colored pigment stones with some amount of cholesterol and calcium salts of palmitate and stearate this is very important certain calcium salts of palmitate and stearate are present over here so usually the black pigment stones they are less than 1.5 cm multiple small friable spiculated and molded whereas the brown colored stones they are laminated soft soap or grease like usually the black colored stones they are usually radio opaque because of the presence of calcium salts as we can appreciate over here a lot of calcium carbonate is present and calcium salts are present whereas the brown uh, pigment stones are usually radio lucent okay so this is about the basic morphology of the pigment stones now we are going to read about the clinical features okay of gall stones so gall stones are usually present for decades before it becomes symptomatic 70 to 80 percent of the asymptomatic okay 70 to 80 percent of the patients they with gallstones are asymptomatic throughout their lives symptomatic cases usually present with biliary colic the term colic is a misnomer because there is a constant pain and it is not a colicky pain pain often follows a fatty meal that causes gall bladder contraction which presses the stone against the gall bladder outlet or at the cystic duct or at the neck of the gall bladder just increasing the pressure in the uh, you know intraluminal pressure of the gall bladder thus causing pain pain is usually present in the right upper quadrant or in the epigastric area which might radiate to the right shoulder or back so what are the complications of gall stones you can see cholecystitis or inflammation of the gall bladder the gall bladder might be filled up with pus that is empyema it might lead to perforation formation of fistula cholangitis inflammation of the bile ducts okay pancreatitis can be there or formation of gall stones or formation of stones in the biliary tract leading to obstruction that is cholecystitis remember that in compared to larger stones the small stones are more dangerous because they can go and get impacted at the neck of the gall bladder and precipitate acute cholecystitis the larger stones they erode into the adjacent small bowel loop larger stones can erode into the adjacent a small bowel loop and can lead to intestinal obstruction this is called as gallstone ileus also known as bovaret syndrome and the presence of a uh, gall uh, gallstones also increases the risk of gall bladder carcinoma so this is all about cholelithiasis which can be asked as a long answer question in the exam next we are going to start with the cholecystitis now cholecystitis as you can appreciate from the term it is nothing but it is the inflammation of the gall bladder it can be acute chronic or it can be acute which is superimposed on chronic cholecystitis it occurs almost in association with the gall stones it is one of the most common indications for abdominal surgery so we are going to discuss both acute as well as uh, chronic cholecystitis first we are going to start with the acute cholecystitis 
So it occurs in 90% of the cases because of the obstruction of the neck of the gallbladder or the cystic duct by a small stone. Now acute cholecystitis can be because of two causes. It can either be because of the gallbladder stone that is calculus variety of acute cholecystitis or it can be a calculus that is in the absence of gallstone. So 90% of the cases they are acute calculus variety whereas only 10% of the cases are acute a calculus variety. Now calculus variety of the cholecystitis it forms the primary complication of gallstones and most common reason for emergency cholecystectomy whereas a calculus one is not associated with gallstones and it occurs in severely ill patients. Coming to the pathogenesis, the pathogenesis first we are going to discuss for acute calculus variety. So in the acute calculus cholecystitis, it is characterized by the chemical irritation and inflammation of the gallbladder which is obstructed by the stone. Because of the constant inflammation, there is stimulation of mucosal phospholipase which is going to convert the luminal lecithin into toxic lysolecithin. This is going to disrupt the normal protective glycoprotein mucus layer and the mucosa gets exposed to the detergent like action of, of the bile salts thus causing damage. The prostaglandin which is released in this inflammatory reaction can also cause or contribute towards mucosal and mural inflammation. Now there is it is now, there, uh, now there is a characteristic gallbladder distension and intraluminal pressure is, is very high which also compromises the blood flow to the mucosa. Bacterial infection usually do, is not present in the beginning. Bacterial infection may superimpose and exacerbate the inflammatory process but usually it is not the initial finding. It develops on later okay, and it can exacerbate the inflammatory process. Coming to the pathogenesis of A calculus variety, it results because of ischemia secondary to inflammation, edema of the gallbladder wall and gallbladder stasis because of accumulation of microcrystals of cholesterol that is the biliary sludge or presence of viscous bile, mucus or cystic duct obstruction in absence of stone because of some other reason there is obstruction. It takes place in the setting of acutely ill patients which are hospitalized for some other reason. They basically develop sepsis with hypotension and multi-system organ failure or immunosuppression or major trauma and burns, diabetic or they are suffering from diabetes mellitus or some severe infections. Okay? So basically acutely ill patients hospitalized for some other reasons like sepsis, immunosuppression, major trauma, burns and diabetes, okay, under such settings, they might develop acute a calculus variety of cholecystitis. Now looking at the morphology, now the morphology in both the conditions are the same, the only difference is that in the calculus variety you will see the stone. So gallbladder is enlarged, it is tense bright red or blotchy violaceous to greenish black discoloration which is imparted by the subserosal hemorrhage. Cirrhosa frequently covered by cirrhosa is frequently covered covered by fibrinous exudate, thus causing a fibrino or sometimes in severe cases it might become fibrinopurulent as well. In the calculus variety, the obstructing stone is usually present in the neck of the gallbladder or the cystic duct. The gallbladder lumen will contain one or more stones. They also contain cloudy turbid bile mixed with fibrin pus or hemorrhage. When the exudate is purely pus or purulent, we call it as gallbladder empyema. And in the mild cases of acute cholecystitis, the GB wall is thickened, it is edematous and it is hyperemic. Whereas in severe cases, you will see gangrenous changes with the presence of greenish black necrotic areas that is gangrenous uh, cholecystitis which might lead to perforation and diffuse peritonitis which is again an important surgical emergency. Invasion by gas forming organisms that is clostridia and coliforms might be seen as well and that is basically leading to acute emphysematous cholecystitis. Micro on microscopic examination, you will see the presence of edema, congestion and mucosal erosion. Neutrophils are typically very sparse in acute cholecystitis. Okay? So if you see grossly, this is the acute cholecystitic gallbladder, you can see they are tense, enlarged and hyperemic. Clinically, if you see again for the calculus variety, you will see presence of right sided upper quadrant or epigastric pain which is lasting for more than 6 hours, usually has experienced previous episodes of pain. They are frequently associated with mild fever, nausea, vomiting, tachycardia and sweating. Most patients are free of jaundice. Okay? If jaundice is present, it is indicative of obstruction of the biliary tree. There will be mild to moderate leukocytosis with modestly elevated ALP. Onset, is, onset can be either sudden which constitutes an acute surgical emergency 
or it can be mild which resolves on its own but such cases which are resolving on its own they also have increased chances of recurrence now if no medical uh, treatment is taken the, the attack itself will subside in 7 to 10 days but frequently it can subs it subsides within 24 hours around 25% of the patients of acute cholecystitis will develop progressively more severe symptoms and require immediate surgical intervention so this is about the clinical feature of the calculus variety in the a calculus variety the onset is more insidious or gradual why the onset is very gradual remember the clinical features of such cholecystitis is often obscured by the underlying condition precipitating the attack in severely ill patients it's important to recognize the signs symptoms of a calculus cholecystitis because failure to do so always proves fatal and because uh, they are admitted for some other reason therefore the doctors tend to overlook this condition so you should always have a high suspicion when the patient is not improving despite the therapy you should always get a usg done and to see whether gallbladder inflammation is present or no there is an increased incidence of gangrene and perforation and this occurs mainly because of delay in the diagnosis of such cases rarely there might be infection with salmonella typhi and staphylococci which can give rise to acute a calculus cholecystitis now this a calculus cholecystitis can also occur in the setting of systemic vasculitis severe atherosclerotic ischemic disease aids uh, uh, where, where the infection is by cryptosporidium and ascending biliary tract infection lastly we are going to read and complete the chronic cholecystitis remember this chronic cholecystitis can be asked as a long answer question and it is a 100% practical exam question practical viva question then you can also have a museum specimen on the same okay so chronic cholecystitis is usually a sequel to repeated bouts of mild to severe acute cholecystitis but it might also develop prior to any previous attack it is associated with the presence of gallstones in 90% of the cases therefore at risk population is same as that we have seen for gallstone that is fat fertile female of 40 super saturation of bile predisposes to both chronic inflammation and in most instances stone formation so remember it is not the stone that is the direct cause of chronic cholecystitis it is rather the super saturation of bile which is basically uh, you know causing inflammation and giving rise to cholecystitis and because super saturation is also giving rise to uh, to to gallstones therefore both cholecystitis and stone formation they are associated with each other in more than 90% of the cases microorganisms like e coli and enterococci can be present in one third of such cases looking at the morphology of the gallbladder the serosa is usually smooth and glistening but may be dulled by subserosal fibrosis because there is chronic inflammation so you can also see dense fibrous adhesions may be present that represents the sequel of prior acute inflammation on the cut section the gallbladder wall is thickened and has grayish white appearance it contains greenish yellow mucoid bile and usually the presence of stones mucosa is generally preserved so as you can appreciate this is a this is a classic case of chronic cholecystitis so you can see that the gallbladder lumen is filled up with cholecystitis